Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Kwan Blay, and this is another Chelsea video from me. And in this video, I'll be doing a talking point video, and it's more of a tactical analysis, delving into the tactical side of things regarding Kai Havertz. We know his announcement is imminent, either today, although as I record this video, it is relatively late, so I doubt Kai Havertz is going to be announced today. However, highly likely he could be announced tomorrow, so you'll be seeing plenty of announcement videos, including Thiago Silva and Kai Havertz. But I want to delve into tactical analysis, give you guys a bit of tactical backgrounds and the positions Kai Havertz can operate in, play in, and what to expect from next season. Because, of course, the German sensation, German generational talent is signing for a world record fee when it comes to uh, Chelsea's club record fee, around 80 million euros, of course, which could rise to 100 euros. But before I do delve into tactical analysis of Kai Havertz, make sure you smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on Kai Havertz as a player. How do you see him suiting? Uh, what position do you think he should play best? And yeah, leave me your thoughts and in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's continue into the tactical analysis of Kai Havertz. Now, obviously, Chelsea <clears throat> set the sign the 21 year old German sensation Kai Havertz. I'm going to be analysing how the vastly talented attacking midfielder can essentially be utilised by Frank Lampard and what we can see from next season in the Premier League and at Stamford Bridge. Havertz will likely operate in the right central midfield role in a midfield three that incorporates two number eights and a six, which Lampard has recently utilised. It's highly likely Havertz will play in the role Ross Barkley has recently been playing alongside Mason Matt and Angola Kanze. Havertz, as we know, has many strengths in his game. However, when operating in an advanced position, Havertz boasts an incredible football IQ with great movement, in between the lines, Havertz <clears throat> often finds himself in great positions to shoot or make incisive passes. In the 2019 to 2020 season, Havertz scored 19 goals, an elite number for a midfielder, especially of his calibre and age. Many of those came directly from Havertz's sublime movement and timing of runs into the box, just like Frank Lampard when he was younger. Havertz's intelligence, along with his speed, makes him a nightmare for defenders to track. From a creative standpoint, Havertz is a phenomenal passer of the ball. He averaged 46.2 passes per game with an 85.3% success rate. Additionally, he averaged 1.9 key passes per game and Havertz managed 8 assists in total for the season, which in my personal opinion is very impressive figures considering you know the team he plays for, the league he plays in and of course his age. You know He's the youngest German attacker in the Bundesliga to reach a certain amount of goals and assists for his age. So. He is the biggest thing coming out of Germany and we are so privileged, we are so lucky as Chelsea fans to have such a top you know, class calibre player signing for Chelsea and it really is a start of great things to come for this club this decade. Now obviously a further significant strength to have versus this game is his ability to score goals with either foot as well as his head. Out of the 19 goals Havertz scored, 12 were scored with his left foot, 4 with his right and 3 with his head. An invaluable asset to have, we know, since post-lockdown, he was scoring a lot of goals for Leverkusen. He had a bit of a poor patch when it came to Christmas Hill lockdown for that 3-month period. But after lockdown, he was scoring plenty of headers and he's versatile. So, you know, he can score with either foot and with his head, etc. Like I said, very, very impressive, you know, asset and skill to have, especially at that young age. Now, the question is often raised with the signing of Havertz. What happens to Mount? You know, he had a fantastic, brilliant debut season at Chelsea. You know, he scored seven goals in the Premier League. He was crucial in getting Champions League football. He has very valuable assets to Chelsea. Lampard likes his, his high pressing, intensive pressing, especially Lampard's system of Gagan pressing. His high intensive pressing, his passing in between the lines, his eye for the goal, his movement in between the spaces. Will Havertz's signing hinder Mount's growth and development? And the answer to that is both hold the potential to coexist perfectly. As I stated, the formation Frank Dambock could potentially utilise or use is obviously the one with the two attacking eights with you know a number 60 M which will either be occupied by Kante or if we sign Declan Rice or Jorginho or even Kovacic at certain game times. But obviously with the two attacking eights, Mason Mount and obviously Kai Havertz can coexist perfectly together and in fact make each other better due to their styles of play and skill sets. Havertz is operating as an eight alongside Mount would be a very promising combination for Chelsea with both players boasting great movement between the lines and goal scoring ability. They would form a very difficult partnership for defenders to come up against. As for Havertz and Mount, they both have a knife for a goal as I keep stating. The defenders will need to close them down whilst creating space for Chelsea's dangerous attack of Pulisic, Verne and Ziyech to utilise Chelsea hold the potential to be an attacking juggernaut next season. Now overall, given my conclusions of Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz is phenomenal for Chelsea. A player with an already incredibly high footballing IQ and superb ability being coached but one of the best ever to play in his position as in Frank Lampard, Havertz may just become a Ballon d'Or winner at Chelsea 
those essentially what I wrote down. Those are notes I wrote down. That's what I generally believe in. If you cast your minds back to, I don't know, any older fans are watching this right now, cast your minds back to 2005 when Frank Lampard came second in the Ballon d'Or race. And Frank Lampard's, I see so much, you know, valuable assets and skills and attributes in Kai Havertz that are so similar stylistically to Lampard. His, his timings of runs into the box, the way he scores, the amount of goals and assists that he racks up. And generally you're being coached by someone who was perfect for that position, you know, with superstars around you, Ziek, Pulisic, Werner, Thiago Silva, Chilwell, Kante behind you. You know, we're developing to a superstar team and there's so much to look forward to. I think Kai Havertz is really going to thrive in the environment that he is, thrive with the players around him and just, you know, carrying on with the tactics around the tactical analysis. With him being in the number eight position of two attacking eights and Mason Mount, they can both operate co coexistently, but the way they can operate in between lines, link up play, the um, operation in the half spaces, um, the goal scoring amount, the chance creation, and against teams that, you know, are very compact shaped, two banks of four, with that, you know, low block tactic, Mason Mount, especially Kai Havertz, can unlock those low blocks with the pivotal passes, the key passes, the link up play, the little tricks and skills, and He's so technical, you know, in his position, the way his movement and his skill, and he's so good when it comes to press resistance. He rarely loses possession as well, which is so key. And you have different type of players with different skills. So you've got Ziek, who obviously does lose possession a lot of time, but that's because of his riskiness and skill, you know. He scores a lot of wonder goals, a lot of amazing passes and assists, ability to break those low balls. You've got Pulisic, we've already seen what he can offer this, to this team this season. Amazing timing of the runs, his movement, his ability to finish, his finishing has really exponentially improved this season. You've got Timo Werner, we know he's one of the best goal scorers in Europe. We've seen that with the statistics, what he's done for RB Leipzig. And honestly, the way they can all gel together. And you know, you look at it from a tactical point of view, Kai Havertz with Ziek, as he, you know, he's gonna predominantly play on the right hand side, cutting it on his stronger preferred left foot. As he cuts inside onto the left. It gives space for Rhys James. It gives space because as Ziek is not on, you know, your out and out winger, he's more of a, you know, infield winger. As he cuts into his left, into the middle of the park, you have the likes of, um, you know, Rhys James making that overlap, have that all that utilize all that acres of space for his crossing ability. And tactically, this team is going to be perfect. You got Ziek, like I said, cutting on a stronger left foot, and it forces Kante to, to remain deeper because obviously Ziek is operating those spaces where Kante would usually be. Because Kante, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder, he'd love to attack those spaces, move into the space. But with Ziyech operating that space instead, because obviously Ziyech cuts in because he's not now on that winger and he's stronger at foot, his left foot, he cuts in, it forces him to Kante to stay back. So it makes Kai Havertz' defensive contribution less. And it allows Kai Havertz to really focus and thrive his game because he has more opportunities in the final third. He has more chances to make that killer pass, make that killer shot, you know, link up the play of Timo Werner, Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech. The Mace Mount link up, and obviously, with Mount being so you know hyper intensive when it comes to intensive pressing, same with Kai Havertz, it makes a fantastic combination. It's why it's perfect, they can coexist together. And you've got the squad depth to go with it. You know, you've got Ruben off his cheek on the bench as well. If one of them become injured or tired, who can play perfectly in the number eight position. So, I think that you know, we have so many options, so many opportunities, and I think that Kai Havertz is perfect for that position. And not just even in that two attacking eight formation. You know, he, he's so versatile. We can even play force nine. If we have a massive striker crisis, he can play force nine. Havertz can even play on the right, right hand side, even as a low number 10 position. You know, he's tall, strong physique, has the pace and power, but also the elegance likes of Zidane and even um, Balak or Urzo in that sense. He has so many attributes and so versatile, which Lampard loves, like I said. He can play as a lone 10, can play in a two attacking in his position, can play on the right-hand side, can play as a full sign, can play, even play on the left-hand side. And it's perfect when you have an injury crisis. It's perfect when you want to essentially spring a surprise to the opposition tactically. And I think that there's so much tactical options and he suits the system perfectly for Lampard. And I think Kai Havertz, that's how, you know, tactically he suits into the team. You know, analysis-wise, it's perfect. You've seen the statistics, you've seen the metrics. He's perfect. But... That is me going to wrap up the tactical nice video on Kai Havertz. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification, and comment down below your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. But without further ado, I'm going to be wrapping up this video, and I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.